why not have drinks and decorate, which could go terribly wrong in our front yard. So I've got ice cubes, I've got water, also known as our pacer drink. And then I have a little bottle of wine, Ooh. some nuts. Mm. And then I have all those drawer liners and everything. Like nice. all the little things we need to do. Yes. Let's get them done. Charlie's got this cone on. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, I swear we're doing okay without a slide. But Charlie comes through with his big satellite on, just like scraping everything. <laughs> okay. Position 27. All right. Oh I'm gonna God. flip the camera around. We're gonna get some fuel. And we're gonna like look at some weights. This is fun. <laughs> How's it going in here? How was it? No slides. <laughs> yeah. I could just come in. Like a place just evacuated in a couple days. Yeah. Everyone yeah. just left. Everyone changed your flights and left about a couple hours after they said we were dismissed. So you Okay, we're packing up to go on our, I don't know, 12, 1300 mile drive. It's probably gonna take us about close to two days. So anyhow, I just filled up with water. Not too much water, just about 35%. That should be enough in case we do some sort of dry camping tonight, because we don't really know where we're gonna stay. And just in case we hit like an Elks Lodge or a Harvest Host, then we can flush the toilets and make breakfast and things like that. But you should know, if you're new to a travel trailer, that when you only have one third water in your tanks, and your rig is, let's say, susceptible to sway, that that water sloshing back and forth can actually create a sway situation. So I don't think with where the axles are positioned in the airstream and pulling up the truck and everything being level and the weight distribution system, we didn't experience any sway going from uh, San Antonio to here, so I'm not overly worried about it, but it is something I keep in mind. And if I didn't mention it, anytime you have sway, you want to, the first thing you want to do is reach down to that trailer brake and depress it to straighten out that trailer immediately. The first sign, that's your go-to move. Uh, I've been talking with quite a few people that uh, did not do that maneuver quite fast enough. Once that trailer starts really going into a sway situation where the tires are just grinding into the ground, it can be hard to get back. So, shouldn't make you nervous, you just need to know uh, how to solve it, but then more importantly, what's causing it? Where is your weight? Do you have too much weight in the back? Oftentimes, if you have too much weight in the back of the trailer, that'll initiate sway. So you're gonna make sure your weight and balance is good. Make sure you have the proper hitch. Make sure you're level. Towing a travel trailer should not be a white knuckle experience. If it is white knuckle for you, something's out of alignment and you just need to look into it. What are you wowing about? Just trying to get everything all like in a spot. Every time I think, ah, this is gonna be too big, I find like the perfect spot for something. I, that's how I feel. This thing is blowing me away. It, you would think one, two, three. Everything I used five. to store in those yellow containers in the bed of the truck mm -hmm. are neatly tucked in some sort of cubby around the rig. And now there's nothing left in the bed of the truck. Really? Are you being serious? I'm dead serious. It's all put away. Wow. And it's seeming, it's, it's mind blowing. Wow. I know we're in a honeymoon phase. We absolutely are. We're in a honeymoon phase. So we'll have to get back with you on whether. Okay, or not I'm gonna set this. I'm gonna set this down. Yeah, well, with the, by the time we do an RV tour, we'll be straightforward yeah. in terms of I wish it had this, and we're sacrificing that. Blah blah right. blah. But right now we're like little hearts are coming out. Yes. We're like Pepe Le Pew. Oh, mwah, 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 mwah. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go measure it. The website said nine nine. It, it looks it looks nine nine or less. So I had just a couple more things to say about measuring the height of your rig, all right? This is from personal experience. Trish and I, season one, we're still pretty new. We're in New York City. We're going 60 miles per hour down a freeway. We both look up and we see the low clearance bridge. It says nine feet, two inches. That was the height of the side of the bridge, not the middle of the bridge, but we were freaking out. And in that moment, we could not remember for the life of us how tall our RV is. And that's why we're a big fan after you measure your rig to get one of these label makers and print it. We use this thing for all sorts of things throughout the RV, which is pretty nice. Anyhow, if you're gonna print the height of your rig, Platinum Ginger is nine feet, nine inches, but she's also three meters. This is important because we've done a fair amount of uh, RVing in Canada, also New Zealand, but with our rig in Canada. And as soon as you cross the border, you look up at the sign and you're like, 
how high is that, right? And so anyhow, I just took this and I put it, I stuck this actually to my TPMS system on the windshield. That way when I'm not on the windshield, the TPMS system mounted to the windshield. And that way when I look up there, I can always see the height of our rig. I cannot stress enough that when you're coming up against a low clearance bridge, the faster you're going, the harder it is to remember the height of your RV. It's really important to have it written down. Now, a lot of people put a little buffer in there, like if they have a big toy hauler and it's 12 feet, eight inches, they just remember anything less than 13 feet. That's fine, but let me just tell you the, the drawback. If you're going fast and you see a low clearance bridge and it says 12 feet, nine inches, it's very hard at that moment to remember how much buffer did we add? How much buffer did we add? I, I'd rather just have the exact number and the exact clearance. Obviously the clearances are, they fluctuate. They're not often as high as they are. Or they're not as low as they are. But if you know you're nine, nine and it says 10 and you can't stop, you know that you might have a chance. All right, so just a couple little points about that. And the other thing I wanted to share as we pop back to Texas now is about uh, the fuses in a truck and how to get power back on your seven way pin. Okay, owner's manual. One thing I learned when we had our very first truck when it wasn't sending power back through the seven way is that often there's uh, two fuses that you need to send power back through your seven way. So if you grab your owner's manual and you go to the back and you go to the F you go to fuses, it'll give you the page where the fuse chart is on. Then you go to a page and you look at where the towing fuse is. And then I always carry spare fuses because we had a fuel pump fuse go out on us. It was a 15 amp fuel pump fuse in Bend, Oregon. We ended up having to get towed. Took the truck to a, a repair shop. They couldn't figure out why the truck wouldn't start. I went down to O'Reilly bought the fuse, put it in, no problem. Of course, what, what causes a fuel pump fuse to go out? Often when you're running gas too low, puts too much uh, strain on the actual fuel pump. But anyway, I have needed fuses on three occasions in our four years of RV travel, so now we just carry every kind of an assortment and I keep it in my glove box. So now if I go to position 27, it's a 30 amp trailer tow battery charge relay if equipped, it is equipped. So it's a 30 amp. Let me go see if I have a 30 amp. By the way, in here I always carry these fuses that go to your RV panel, like three amps and five amps and 10 amps because often you'll have an issue. At some point, there'll be an issue with those. Oh, here it is, 30 amp. Make sure it's good, it's good. Let's go put it in. That's it. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh. Oh. Thank you for taking oh. good care of us. You're so welcome. Thank you. That's nice. Insulation. Okay, no, oh, look at it go up. Oh, there are the rakes. There are the rakes. Wow. Right, let's get a window rolled down, tow haul on. Bye. 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 We'll see you soon. Okay. Okay, you're good. We're through the wires. Woo! Oh, let's Lord. get that back. Yay. Oh, it was good. Fun, fun right as always. See you soon. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Wait for November. Bye. 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 I am mine, I am my own Said the ancients years ago Apples and pears, rod and lime The eulogy itself can write The man was dead, I wondered Do I have a hero that'll stay? We're behind this RV and he's got steady water. It makes us think makes us think that maybe his water pump is left on and the faucet got turned on. We've learned through all our RVing experience that if anyone is coming up beside you and getting your attention, you have a problem. No one's no one's saying hi. I will catch up to him. Okay. Well, it is a super duty. Yeah. We might not catch up to him. We might not catch up to him. You got a lot of water coming out. I'm trying to fresh water. We filled it up before we left. And we just, it we thought maybe your water pump was left on, so that's good. Okay. <laughs>
Trish had one job. What? Cat scale. What? One job, Trish. Cat scale. And you know what? I yeah. think she passed. I think she passed it on purpose. I do. I think she saw it. And she's like not making eye contact. <laughs> on being awfully quiet. I can go on any other way. about 25 to 30 cat scales while Trisha was driving I estimate that is so she says it has she false. says she says she didn't false. see him false. I said what about that one on this false. exit and she false. says ah cruise control is what? on it's adaptive cruise control I, I, I don't know how to turn it off I'm like this is false something isn't right so I decided to get in the driver's seat and six <laughs> minutes later cat scale I don't know how that happens so you here are we are making this pretty excited up. if you've been with kyd since the beginning you know that when we get a new rig we like to take the cat scale we don't we don't showcase You're every right. cat scale because then your destination will be Trish doesn't let me well you you'd be just annoyed as i am but wait where's the fuel? oh no mark no they have a cat scale because i did a little google satellite oh okay see right there oh good yep so we're gonna get a full tank of fuel and then we're gonna hop on over on that cat scale. And I know you're pumped. And we're gonna get the weights on everything. Oh, look. oh, truck just pulled out. That's awesome. I love going through the cat scale because I pull up and they go, I shot a me! And I say, um, no. I shot a decision. I'm like, no truck number private. They're like, I just trying to stay there. I'm like, okay, great. I'll see you inside. That's how that conversation normally goes. <laughs> Make sure everything's where I want it to be. There's three pads. So you put the front tires on the front pad, the rear tires on the second pad, and then the trailer goes on the third pad. And then when you get the printout, it'll show you the steering axle, the drive axle, and the trailer axle. You hit that button, and then, uh, and then you try to decipher what they're saying. First way. Clock number. The private. Last floor of your social. Say that again. Last floor of your social. Are you all set? Thank you. A couple things. I forgot. I haven't done this in a while. That they like a number, so even private doesn't cut it. So if they want a number, just give them a number. Make up a four-digit number. But. Um, there's an app that everybody has been telling me to download, so I'm gonna download it. It apparently makes this a lot faster. Yes, please, please, please download that. <laughs> right back in there, I'm gonna Wait, slide it why? in. What? Why? Because I gotta go, go over into here. the. Go over here where it's easy. Oh, why? go where it's easy. I know, I shouldn't What's... have said that. I shouldn't have said that. But look at how well, that's desirable. Reserved. That's reserved. Desirable. It's reserved. Now I know why everything tows like a dream. Why? Because everything is so incredibly light. Really? I mean, heavy where you want it in the truck, right? The entire setup is less than our trailer alone in our last rig. So our gross weight is 15,960. That's our gross combined weight, vehicle weight. For right? everything. Everything is 15,960. Wow. The steering axle is 4720. The drive axle is 4720. So that means 4720 times two. Well, 47. Okay, so 4720 plus 4700 is 9420. The payload of the truck can't exceed 10,000. So we have 680 to spare. Nice. Okay, but the, but the weight on the trailer is 6,500, including the pin weight. Wow. So I just, you know, those are beautiful. beautiful. Good numbers. Beautiful. Good numbers. Are you going to drive for a little while? I'm going to just get us out of here and then um, let's switch and we get some work done. So. Super trucks. Anyhow, I'd say regardless if it's a travel trailer or if it's a fifth wheel, just know your numbers. I did a whole video on payload capacity. Typically when it comes to towing, everyone's concerned about what it can tow. And really most trucks max out their payload 
uh, lo long before they max out their towing capacity. How do um, you get out of here? So I would say in order, I don't know how to get out of here, in order of priority, I would say, not priority, they're all they're all important, but payload and then your rear like axle coming in. rating, I see them. Your rear axle rating, that's another thing that a lot of people are over. When they're over gross, they're over on their axle, rear axle. You totally cut them off. Stop, 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 stop. Slow. Trisha driving on the highway and there's all sorts of semi trucks and bouncing and all the sorts of things. And then the truck beeped and said trailer disconnected. So I told Trish, why don't you just squeeze the trailer brakes just a little bit just to see if it works and didn't work. Then she turned on the left blinker and what's really nice about an Airstream is they have little blinker knobs in the middle of the side so you can actually see if you're connected right from the cab, which is nice. So anyway, we are not connected now. So we're looking for a place to pull over. I think the screen doesn't work. Anyway, I. Uh, got in there and played around with the seven wave plug real quick and it looks like it's just sagging down a little bit but I do think a little electrical grease in there would make a more secure connection. If not, I'll, I'll find another way but it's good to know that you don't have brakes so you just be extra careful. Put even more lanes of uh, cars in front of you when you're behind someone and take it easy. This was the same thing that happened in Alaska. It would come on, it would come off, it would come on, it would come off and then we put the little electrical grease in there and put it on and never came off again. Pulling over because the trailer is disconnected. It's been doing that. The road's been doing this, and it's been coming disconnected, and then it connects, and then it disconnects. And it it's, dings every time that happens too. It's connected now. Yeah. So, so the, the brakes problem. don't work yeah. when it disconnects. Oh my gosh, is that beautiful or what? It's probably because it's all soaking wet. Yeah, okay, and you should probably, yes, come see. Mm, yeah. No. So here's where we need to intervene this video with some real-time perspective. We had a great plan. Carson was going to come from school. We were <laughs> going to go to Malibu. It was all going to be really it warm yes. and nice. It was a great plan. You know that Malibu RV park that we stayed at, what, on the last time we went up through season three? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we had reservations there. It was going to be amazing. <laughs> Just like many of you with your reservations that <laughs> yes. did not come to fruition. Yeah, none of that ended up happening. Yes. So we needed to fill in some holes now because there. this is when... The videos are starting to catch up to this whole thing, all this, all these changes, and so we wanted to just fill in some holes. And while we have you here, the Summer to Member shirts finally made their way to us, and we yes. added a couple new designs. We're excited about that. These are going to be available next Sunday. We just got them, and so we thought we'd put them on. Yeah. And Super Hillary's comfy. design, yeah. number one, she made it. So yeah. anyway, yeah. we're Congrats very to excited. Hillary. Anyway, let's go back to Carefree, and then we'll meet you back here for some more real-time perspective. <laughs> so we went to go get Carson. He's back. I'm sure many of you have your kids back from school, from college, from all kinds of stuff. So um, I'm actually kind of excited about it selfishly because we get to spend more time with him. Um, and I'm glad to know that he's back and safe. So anyway, we're just rinsing off some veggies. My shopping bill is going up. <laughs> and um, luckily the grocery stores are getting restocked. And uh, we're gonna make some steaks. I have a little pasta side dish. Um, but you know, I have this very tall like fully grown man now, <laughs> extra person that I need to feed. So that's what I did. So you want to make some steak? <laughs> Trisha, oh Trisha, yeah. come out. Come outside? Oh, you, you got to see the sunset. Oh, oh my gosh. Isn't that amazing? I love Arizona. Yeah. It's gorgeous. You can see what you're looking at in the reflection of the windows. It's absolutely, totally gorgeous. Can you hold the camera while I light this? Um, yeah, but I'm going to mess up my pasta salad. So, so no. No. <laughs> Okay. All right, so we're gonna get this nice and hot and then Trish might season it and then we'll grill some steaks. Spring in Arizona. 
Bring your Claritin. <laughs> Big time. But it's time. worth it. Okay, carefully you don't burn your fingers. Careful. Or hot, hot, hot. Holy hotness. <laughs> Charlie. Hey guys, I don't like to be left alone. Okay, so what are you doing here exactly? It's called seasoning when you have like a new grill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> getting asphyxiated. You pour on some really um, high temperature oil, safflower, mm. like there's different kinds of high temperature oils mm -hmm. that you can use and then you burn it all off so it makes a non-stick surface and you do it a couple times. Gotcha. So, anyway, And then what do we have, just flank steak? I have some flank steak that I've been marinating. Well, I put a dry rub on it and that's it. I've got a pasta side salad, a little spinach. Easy. Easy peasy. I didn't put a hat on because I couldn't take my hair anymore. <laughs> Just, you can I'm, do whatever you I'm want. I'm pretending like I'm on vacation. So, in the driveway. In the you know, driveway. we've actually been hanging out in the RV a lot, and we came down here a couple nights ago, and we watched a movie. We watched a documentary in the Airstream. It was super fun. It was fun. It was super I'm sure fun. we're not alone. I'm no. sure there's a lot of driveway camping going oh, on. Oh, I've been getting all kinds of pictures. Some people are posting pictures of their camper in their yard, and I'm thinking, can we come? Like, how much is that? <laughs> I mean, it's nice. So you got a fire pit and a deck, and I'm like, yards. why go anywhere? <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> Anyhow, yeah. all right. So we're back in Flag. So here's what ended up happening. Yes. We think we found out we couldn't go to Malibu. I think we decided that we weren't going to go to Malibu, right. and then shortly after, California had their stay-at-home order. Then we had to come back up to Flag, and Flag got dumped. So much snow. With snow. By the way, if you're wondering. That how it could possibly be snowing because we live in Arizona and you've never really been out to Arizona. We're up in Flagstaff and Flagstaff is about two hours north of Phoenix. The cabin's at 7,100 feet. Mount Humphreys, right behind us, is a 12,000 something foot mountain. So when it snows here, it dumps. But it's absolutely beautiful and the cabin's about 45 minutes from Sedona, maybe 35. You can take the 89B which is the scenic route down into Sedona. We're about an hour and a half south of the Grand Canyon. We're about 35 minutes from Williams where you can get the Grand Canyon train to go to the Grand Canyon. And a whole bunch of other stuff, cool stuff to do here. It's a, it's a cool place. Oh yeah, and then we're three hours from Zion, which is pretty cool. It's a great location to have a base to go RVing from. It was so sad that all the ski lifts were closed. And yeah. every, you know, I mean, rightfully so, but still. Yeah. It was so much snow. And so then we couldn't bring the RV back to Flag. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't keep it in Carefree because they didn't have any sites available. Because we tried to string it together as many nights as possible. It was 30 bucks a night, so it was expensive to do that. Right. But we couldn't bring it home. So we had to, for the first time in KYD history, move the RV into storage. <laughs> That's fine. Look at this. We we're like, as we're driving down, 19, 18, 17. Oh, it's right here with the, all the beams that we have to avoid. Passenger side. Okay. Bye, little airstream. So the rig was there for about, oh, 10 days-ish, mm -hmm. and then we went, it, the snow finally melted, and we went and we grabbed Platinum Ginger, that's what we call this rig, and we've now moved it back up to in front of the cabin. Some lights on in here, and maybe some heat too. Yeah, it's cold. Okay, um, so anyway, I just wanna line the inside of these drawers. Yeah. Because see, they have like little spots on them. Ah, uh, yes. So if that's what was already here, I'm sure I'm gonna make it even worse, so. Let's get this stuff. It's peel and stick, but you can take it off. Okay. And um, I have our little KYD sign. Oh, yeah. The only place to really put it, though, is inside Caleb's closet. And then um, that's it. I don't know. Let's just hang out in here for a while. That's what everybody's Drive doing. Camp. That's what everybody's doing. Yeah. Ooh, very nice. Thank you. Mm. Don't, look, don't look too close. Don't look too close. <laughs> <laughs> People are gonna think I only have three spices. Yeah. Where do you keep all your spices? In the house right now. Oh, okay. Hey, those are great. Isn't that nice? Check these out. 
Okay, so with Airstream, everybody knows there's it's it's go it goes down. So this is kind of like an airplane luggage compartment. Yeah. So that curve really hoses you up when it comes to containers, but yeah. when you get soft containers like yeah. this, you could still get the height and then put them in and it just pushes it just a little bit. Yeah. It's very cool. So yes. I've got those. And then these are soft containers. We'll bring that out so people can see what that is. Okay. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So I got these at Target. And then, so it kind of like, it goes in, but it's still soft. So I can kind of mold it to the space. And then your technology area. Yep. A nice soft one. We'll show them under the bed. But look at how cool. It it's looks awesome. so nice. Yeah. bring one of those out so you got I got these they were ten dollars at Target I'm sure you could just get regular plastic ones too yeah but these just happen to fit really well so I was all about it and they're soft on the sides yeah but they're black so they'll stay clean looking for a long time yeah and and then you got that other one that's made out of the same material as the... yeah. now I really want to find some like stacking like you know those things that they have in preschools where they're like two plastic things and they stack and they're they're like open. I don't remember preschool, but I take your word for it. <laughs> anyway, I kind of want to find a way to put my shoes in like this. I don't gotcha. like them all just stacked on top oh, of each I see. other. Okay, so that's for your shoes. That's going to be probably for like other clothing storage, and then I'm going to figure out how to get the shoes in there better. Gotcha. Show everyone the vacuum mount. Oh. Vacuum mount. Isn't that awesome? Boom. And then I have all the pieces under here, the big long pole and then the head. So we don't need a broom or anything. I could just, and it's charging the whole time. It's well, we in. got an inverted plug and a, and a regular plug. Yes. And then it, it goes into this little device. So it charges like that. Charges. And then and it, it just stays. mounts to the wall. And then it's plugged in the whole time. And then you got your little hat holder. Yes. Oh, okay. So this is a good one. Chip clip. A magnetic chip, chip clip because um, there was not um, a clip strong enough from command strip. Yeah. So I found this chip clip. I put a command strip on the back of it and now my hat can sit here and not get all bent. Yes. Very excited about that. Not much else to report, honestly. Well, we sold the Jeep. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> we did to some insiders, uh, Paul and Pamela. They're was, pretty excited. And it was very exciting to meet them and, yes. you know, yeah. say hi. We stayed, we stayed. We <laughs> Within reason. Within reason. Uh, so anyway, yeah, that was kind of exciting. We still have the teardrop. I think we've decided that it's to sell it. I think part of our philosophy is if we're not really using something and enjoying something, mm -hmm. we shouldn't be maintaining it. That was mm -hmm. a decision we made a long time ago of being very deliberate on the things that we have. And so to store the Jeep and the teardrop and then be gone for eight months out of the year, come back to and to Flagstaff in the winter time just didn't make sense. The boys were not happy. I'll the boys were that. not happy about selling the Jeep. I'll tell you that right we now. weren't either really. No. It was fun. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of fun. But you're either gonna use something or you're not. And if you're not it's time to go. Oh, the other thing we've been doing in our downtime is, uh, well, obviously finding new places to record. <laughs> but um, we've been doing some podcasts. So we just released a couple well, days we ago. One. We, did we, did one. we did one. We did one. There was a very funny comment. He said, so two podcasts over four months. You better be careful or we're going to start expecting these quarterly. <laughs> <laughs> but we are making a bigger commitment to have long format conversations on mm -hmm. things that we consider to be very important. The podcast we just released was uh, living 24-7 with your spouse and family peacefully. So cute. Yeah, look at him. He's so cute. I can just spend 24-7 <laughs> with him. Oh, yes. <laughs> Anyhow, so we each shared three ideas that we think are would be helpful. So check that out. If, if we're on Spotify now, KOD Podcast is on Spotify. Mm -hmm. So just uh, pull up Spotify or iTunes. Or go to keepyourdaydream.com forward slash 111 mm -hmm. and you can listen to that. But cool. uh, And then tell us what other topics. So, you know, the po if you're not, if you don't listen to podcasts, it's an opportunity for us to have like 45 minute, to one hour conversations mm -hmm. and go a little bit deeper into some things that are possible to make dreams happen. Right. Every platform has a different mission. You know, yeah. Twitter is like a one sentence and Instagram yes. is one picture yes. and YouTube is a story mm -hmm. and podcasts are a conversation. Yeah, so, it really is about a conversation. Yeah. And, and our commitment to the community is we want to be tackling topics to help people remove obstacles and make their dreams happen. Like right. that's why we continue to do what we do is because of the emails we receive. Mm -hmm. And we would have never thought that KYD, like making YouTube videos about RV travel would impact people in such a way that 
that would be what would come from this. Yes. And we're honored that we're even able to do it. So it's very cool. Right. We're, it, we feel very grateful. And we use your feedback too. People yes. give us all kinds of great ideas and then we mm -hmm. get to fold them into the mix. Yes. That's about it. We're excited that Summer to Remember shirts are going to be available next Sunday. That's super exciting. The hoodie mm -hmm. we're excited about. I got, we got a long sleeve option, the regular t-shirt. Pretty cool. Yes. So tune in next Sunday at 7 and uh, for our route and more stuff that we're going to be doing in 2020. Okay. And that's it. That's it. We, we for can, now. For now. Bye. Bye. <laughs> it looks kind of cool though, little round mirror. Yeah, isn't it? So, oh yeah, that's great. So that way you can look. You don't have to pull out that tiny mirror. You can kind of like see your. I like mirror. it. Can we? And is then, it? Is it actually mirroring? Yeah. Oh yeah, check it out. But this is what I was thinking maybe it might be cool. What's that? Town command books are holding up this shatterproof mirror. Just we're gonna be the most satisfying part. <laughs> Woo! That's good. Yourself? Yeah, I did. Can you see like your whole outfit though? That's oh, cool. um. <laughs> yeah. Really? Can you see your feet? Uh, no. Darn it. <laughs> really? <laughs> no. Oh, well, at least we have something to get ready. Had a couple friends tell me why this all should end. So let's just shelf it I'll do it all